Hey guys, and welcome back. So let's uh, let's continue, and let's move this guy here. I'm gonna copy this and this as well. So this one, I don't need the main name. I just need. Actually, we can keep that. Okay. So what we need to do, like we did with the uh, with the previous vid with the first videos of the oppressed swap method uh, we need to transfer the name attribute because we don't have that we have a name attribute here but it's only for uh, for the assemble to identify the geo so what we need to do is we need to pack these guys so we can do the transfer between the points and we're gonna create pack geo and then we need to transfer the name attribute And then the attribute that I'm interested in is main name. That's what I want. I'm gonna leave everything as the default. And let's see, we have a main name attribute. And let's take a look at this. Okay. Main name main name and it should be working it's working here Okay, let's make sure we transfer the name attribute. I don't think that's the reason for this. And let me do a pack edit. I want to just see the points. Okay, and I think we have we have a problem. So looking at this, the centroid, uh, the packing is not working as it should be. So th there is somewhere there is an issue. And let's remove this. Okay, let me check. I'm gonna put let's let's you know what let's do something else let's uh, create the unpacking and all interior press let's regenerate the name attribute I want I need to see one point for each uh, for each piece yep so it's working previously it was not working let me turn this off I don't need it and now it should work just fine I think the name the first name attribute that we had was not correct. Yep. Cool. So another thing is what we're doing right now is we're transferring the name attribute from everything here from all the geo and I'm not interested in transferring it from this guy. Okay. I'm interested in transferring it from itself from this so let me import this here and we have a name attribute there and I'm gonna pack this I don't need to change the name attribute I'm gonna pack it I'm gonna rename the attribute so it's main name that way it don't overlap and that's what I'm gonna use to transfer the name attribute and it's a static geo, so it doesn't change over time. And now it's perfect. It's matching the geometry like it should. Okay, so the next part is how we're going to generate a connectivity between all these guys. Well, it's actually pretty simple. We have uh, a name attribute and I'm going to unpack the geo here uh, 
it's gonna take a few seconds because it's a very heavy mesh and we have to make sure that we have both uh, we need to transfer the main name back from the points onto the mesh okay so let's try and it is working we have unpacked geo and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a connect adjacent pieces and for this I don't need uh, I don't need the geo I don't need the entire geo to be present okay let's uh, let's do this let me delete these guys only or isolate them and I'm gonna use a connect adjacent pieces I'm gonna set it to adjacent points and right now it's adding uh, it's keeping the geometry on and I don't need that I only need the points so I'm gonna use an add node and I'm gonna delete geometry by key points let's do that And let's increase the search radius. And let's, sorry, let's reduce it down to the max search to 10, maybe 0.1. Okay, and I'm going to turn on the rest length. So now I have a connectivity between everything. I'm gonna set the color to white or to black. Let's set it to black. Okay. And let's see, we have the main name, cool. We have the name attribute and let's see what happens. So once we deform this newly created geo, we get a connectivity between the pieces and this we can use to transfer onto the mesh like we did with the with the other technique so let's go back to here we have a rest length we have we're going to measure the new primitive length let's copy this Sorry if the screen got interrupted. I think my the memory uh, got filled up and I had to clear out a few things. So uh, sorry if there was a delay or a, an audio stop. And uh, I was about to copy the measure node. So we're computing. We have the rest length, which is uh, stored here. And then we're going to use, we're going to measure the length. And yeah, let's keep that. Let's call that rest. No, let's keep that as uh, length. And then let's create a point vop. And the rest length, I'm going to promote that into a point attribute. From primitive into point. I'm not, I don't want to delete it. And that's fine. length we have length and then I'm gonna promote that as well and I'll explain I'll explain in a second why I need both if we were to compare the length based on uh, from zero compared com compared against zero it's not gonna give us the right result we need to compare it against the original rest length so let's dive inside and let's import both of them so rest length and then also going to import the current length and we need to sub subtract both of them and feed that into the color and 
if the length is the same, if it hasn't changed compared to the original frame, which is the rest length, we're going to see white color, or we're going to see black color as, as it start to change and separate, we're going to get white color. So that's pretty much everything we need. I'm going to add the lead geometry, but key points. We can do it here as soon as we promote. And now we're isolating the border of this of this group and I'm gonna keep let me choose a different section that animates faster uh, animates more or let's make it bigger something like that okay And with these guys, I don't care too much about the core uh, they're in. I just want to start activating them. So I'm going to copy both of these guys, both of these uh, solvers. And I'm going to paste them here. And we're going to tweak them a bit. So we don't have any, any core with this guy. So we don't need this. And we don't have any noise. Here I'm, I'm setting the color to full white. Uh, if if uh, there is a value that has a color of 0 0.4 or 5 or anything like that, I'm just straight flattening that out to white. So when I do it, transfer, it's against white. And I'm going to increase this to 105. And let's take a look. And let me cache, allow caching for both of these guys. Let's hit play. And again, with this, I, I really want the crumbling effect. I don't care too much about the them keeping or staying um, having a core this is just for for details the debris idea i was talking about is very similar to this um, we can also uh, when we did the transfer here let me let me do something actually I, i'm going to show it to you guys okay let me think so we did this this is packed primitives i'm going to create something called centroid and it's equal to the point position. Now, why is that? Well, these are packed primitives, so they are not. Um, if we do a pack edit, we're viewing the geometry, but what really is present is the centroid. And I'm taking that the position here, and I'm tri uh, copying it into an attribute called centroid. When I do the transfer, I'm not just going to transfer the name. I'm going to transfer an attribute called centroid as well. So all these guys are going to receive that. Let's take a look. Once it unpacks the geo. Okay, um, after here we have the centroid as well. So I need to promote that or copy that back onto the geometry. And it needs to run the unpack again. And I don't need this at the moment. I only need the points. I'm going to create a point vop. And I'm going to bind import that centroid thing. What it does is it's going to give me a point position. So let's say this is a cluster, for example. We're going to know a point. We're going to have a point at the center of that cluster. If we take the position of each one of these guys and subtract that, we get a vector pointing in that direction. If we compute the length of that, we can we can get the distance between the center and the edges. There we go. And let's fit range this guy between 1 and 0. Okay, and let's increase it. Something like this. 
and we can say whatever is in this region don't touch that never uh, never change this but I don't like the result too much now so I want to add uh, some noise to it uh, let's do that uh, we can add the noise before we do the subtract thing and it's a 3d noise okay and we can also add see we have a fit range here we can add some randomization between these clusters we have the centroid if we generate a random color based on that it's a 1d that's fine let's generate a 3d vector let's take a look at that we have a random value per cluster i don't need that i want a 1d outputs so we have black and white and i'm going to use that to shift the offset here so this max we can change it per point and I'm this gives me back a value that goes between 0 and 1 and I'm going to fit that between 2 and 3 so that will be my source max and now it's randomized between the blocks maybe that's too much 2.5 and 1.5 yep and we can increase the noise for sure much two and let's uh, multiply this and clamp it so we get just a straight white uh, black and white mask something like that and let's clamp this guy and call this let's bind export this as a limit And so now if we do the connect based on that, we are inheriting the limit attribute, transferring the pieces, all good. And then inside this, I'm going to put down a wrangle node and then the color will multiply it by the limit, which we just made. Actually, it's the inverse, so we need to inverse the mask. One minus that, and let's take a look. Now let's reset both of these guys. Okay, it's going. I want to see it activate there. Yeah, see here, it's activating. I think it stopped now, but it activated all that. Okay, so good. Let's continue. We need the, the remaining, we need this. And also we need this block. Okay. So we need the original geo, which is where where would it be here? We actually, uh, yeah, we need we need the main name. So this is the area that we need. Out interior packed. Okay, and it has the name attribute. That's very, very important. And I'm going to take that. Yeah, I don't want to do all of them. So I'm going to use this for now. And I'll pack it again. Just pack this. Because I, I want to get the, the, the isolated section only for the so it's faster to work with and what else do we have okay so we have that 
and I don't need this. We have the main. Oh, I need the main attributes. So main name and active is zero, active is one, and these are the points I want to use now. Okay, let's copy the active isolation. hit play let's see what's going on it's saying attribute by name uh, by uh, the attribute doesn't exist so what we need to do is we need to make sure the name attribute exists so we have here name Yep, we don't have a name attribute, so let's promote that. Name from primitive to points. And let's reset these nodes. We have to make sure that there is a correlation between the original geo and, and this guy. And we've already done this, that's why I'm going uh, faster at it but uh, everything we have already covered. I'm trying to get the, the activation attribute copied into the mesh. Okay, let's do the test. So this is supposed to, it should work. Then the main reason for this not to work okay let's do let's do the name promotion before the connect ah sorry yeah we need to do it before I need to do the the attribute promote here because I've, I did it after the ad and that killed the the primitives so we should yeah now it should work let's see yeah stuff like this is actually very very tricky and and uh, with destruction unfortunately is is really yeah, you have to fiddle, you have to get used to the entire workflow, fully understand how all the pieces of the puzzle fit together so that when something goes off, you know how to track it down. Yep, it is working. And you can see the geo is activating. And these are the metallic parts that are quite big. I want to voronoi them more, actually. But that's that's basically it okay now the next part is we need to transfer this uh, uh, transform sorry so let's copy this part and that's great it's transforming we need the expression for this for the anim thing upres interior rbd copy this and we have to make sure that the main geometry does not have that geo or the the proxy that we used and I'm gonna rbd packed object I'm gonna just to hold the path I'm gonna copy this and let's merge these two guys together this yeah, press interior and let's hit save and now obviously it's going to be much slower because we have a lot more details uh, with the interior thing
but it's only there so it's, it's not that much okay, let's hit play see what we get now as for the other pieces that were not other parts of the building that we're not planning to oppress we need to feed them in as RBD uh, animated static object uh, it's like we did with the stuff that we didn't oppress and so we need the roof we need the wood structure we need the ground we need anything basically that we're not planning on oppressing so that it, everything the new pieces interact with that so it's very important to feed that into the system and I'm waiting for this to reveal and again I'm doing the sim now it no caching no anything and this is a very high res sim and so the next the other thing that we could do if we want to you know refine this or if you have a, a super close-up shot and you only care about the details in a specific area for example if we were working on this we could explore adding constraints on the new system and uh, the constraint it could be glue constraint could be pin constraint and that will make it maybe more realistic maybe when the collision hits uh, maybe we can be more forgiving with the erosion effect and activate more areas and rely on the glue constraint to hold them up and only let them fracture when they uh, when they interact or hit uh, an object so that's something we definitely uh, can implement if we wanted to okay so we have the new details in let's go here as you can see it is working uh, another thing that we could do is we could uh, compute the velocity of Kong use a point cloud and uh, basically fill Kong with uh, with points and then compute the velocity on those or sample of volume that has the velocity and then the parts where the velocity is really high like the tip of the feet or anything that moves super fast we can transfer that information onto the mesh and use it to activate uh, activate geometry and that could help for example if you're not getting enough details in specific area you could add extra objects or extra points and just transfer attribute and say hey I want to first force this area to activate uh, the other thing that we could do with this method is if you have for example cracks in the lines or uh, uh, yeah you want to do like a, an animated line cracking through the wall you can add a curve for example and add a lot of details around that curve and then use a carve node and simply transfer a color from the curve into the geometry and use that to activate the secondary object so we can add any kinds of uh, uh, RBD being activated through a specific path okay so this is the up res you can see how it is activating as the pieces separate and we're getting tons of details now added here see I'm gonna try to hide this yep Great. And you can see how everything is working. And I'm gonna let this play through. Obviously the, the interior the the metal here is just it's not realistic in terms of movement or anything it's just added something it could be wood it could be plastic whatever it could be pipes um, for example I just added details for visual I didn't have they didn't have any realistic purpose on to them and 
And again, we're super close up now. Like we're this is supposed to be like a super wide shot, but now even close ups we're getting tons of details. So that's that's the advantage of the technique basically. And you can push the details as much as you want with this with this method. Really, there is nothing even with a very limited amount of hardware you can still get 